Just so we're clear, and this is true, I have never drank alcohol, done drugs, or smoked in my entire life. Actually, I bumped up cigarettes in grade nine for like a month because I thought it looked cool, but I never swallowed because you should never swallow if you're a man, right? But I feel that my sanity is having issues. Right? So we go over here. Losty. Uh, Russ Poet's sister. And I'm only saying that because of the hair, right? Don't be all weird about it. I'm just making jokes, right? <laughs> right? She says, I would have definitely purchased it if it went to prize pools for the competitive scene. Why was MK10 further with esports than MK1? Well, because no one gives a shit. <laughs> no one cares about the pro scene. Don't you get it? Like, like nobody cares. Like, this is listen. This is the thing, right? Like these these pro people are detached from reality, right? They think that this is like. It's it's kind of like um, okay. I can, the perfect example I can use is MMOs, right? Perfect example. Okay, so in the MMO community, certain you know top tier, you know the ones that do all the mythic dungeons, like high level dungeons, the hardest difficulty. They think that that is the only thing that matters in the game. That is the only goal that you're striving to get to in the game. That's it because they do it, right? It's like, oh, this is the hardest content. This is the only thing that matters, right? You don't do it, you're a pleb. No, dude. And that is why MMOs over the last decade or more have been completely retuning to the fact of, well, actually, it's the casual player base that is lining our pocket. It's the casuals that we need to stick around and play, and they may venture into that, but we aren't going to build an entire game focused solely on a 2% population, if that. Right? It's not like you go into these dungeons or raids in MMOs and you get everything. First go. No, because they have, like in World of Warcraft, you have things like raid lockouts for a week. Right? So you hit the raid, you've got to wake it, wait a week. <laughs> In a video game you pay for! You know why? Because they don't want people getting everything straight up and having nothing left to do. I personally think they should remove it, but they won't because they're silly and stupid, but I think they should absolutely remove it because all it does is artificially extend the time that people are subscribed to or subscribed for, so. Right? But. When they were focusing hyper level on that, it's like, yeah, but the casuals don't give a shit about that. They want to jump online, just play with their friends, do some questing, maybe a bit of PvP or just achievement hunting or God knows whatever else. And take part in mini games or festivals or whatever. Like, you, you've created this entire world. The entire world is not focused on high end dungeons, right? That's like, there's so much else to do. So what's happened is, is that, and I'm going to do a video, my next video is going to be focused on Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising, because I really want to showcase to you guys, the Japanese are absolutely killing it, right? Japanese for a long time haven't so much really been putting out a lot of sort of, you know, not, not so much not quality offline content, just like other stuff to do when they're fighting games, right? Um, but the fighting game core of the game themselves is really solid so it's been enough to a degree to carry these games mk for the longest time were were essentially the opposite to that you know especially if you go back to the 3d era where we had all the mini games and different game modes and all that sort of stuff then mk9 came out and mk9 was just almost like almost perfect well there's a couple of issues but it's pretty much perfect for me right you know the massive challenge tower which was incredible it wasn't just standing there dodging crap you know uh, you know, multiple times like we get invasions. You know, we actually had some characters jump out and give some little concept and context and stuff. Like Jax would come out and be like, right, you gotta take out these zombies. You know, awesome stuff. You had random combat multipliers that you could play against other people. 
you had the online lobby section, you had like like the rooms, uh, which was cool for then. Uh, and then you had King of the Hill, which was like a being in a theater where you could have your little character down the bottom watching other people play and throwing tomatoes and stuff like that and, and whatnot. And it was really immersive, right? So it sort of encouraged people to get online a little bit and play. Now what we have, we have Street Fighter VI came out of the gate with basically a complete fully offline world, fully interactive, get to run around and meet all these brand new characters and some old ones, interact with them. You know, there's there's reasons for leveling up, leveling up with them to unlock their alt costume, which is a bit of a grind, right? I don't like that part. You got the fighting hub, which is basically the online lobby with arcade machines and stuff, and you can actually use your character and fight other people as well, which was pretty cool. And then you got Tekken 8, and I covered it in the beta, where you've got like full arcade everywhere, in, including different sections. One for like a training area for the Tekken Dojo or whatever. You got a beach area where you're gonna go play like Tekken Beach Ball or whatever it's called, Tekken Ball. You know, you got your arcade area and there's a stage and stuff. Like it's just nuts. You know, you can fight people's ghosts and fighting their ghosts is like fighting them. So it's it that's kind of like blurring the line between offline and online content. But it also creates spaces that that encourage people to get in there and hang out and meet people. And what are we looking at in Mortal Kombat 1? What are we looking at? Two dragons, questionable identity, making out in the background, waiting for a fight that we can't even deny, like we could in MK11, even in ranked mode. Right? And then you get stupid shit like this. Where they would purchase that they're only okay with the Halloween skin at $15 Australian or $12 US if it went to the pro scene. Are these people silly? Right? There's a perfect comment down here. Somebody somebody said it. Where was it? No, it's not it's not on this one. I think it's on this one. Right? This is what I'm saying, like the pro scene only care about themselves. You know? This one, they aren't going to use those funds for pros, bruh. Yeah, that's right. Because they don't care. Hard to care about a competitive scene when we know who's going to win. Now, I've seen comments like this, and I want to hear from you guys, because I've heard stuff like that, and I don't know if that's 100% true or not. If it's rigged. Is it actually rigged to a degree? Right. Water Brothers don't care about your competitive scene, bro, but it does nothing for them in the long run. Not many people care overall about competitive play, so they ain't gonna do do doing donation drives, bro. Liu Kang's new era ain't about you lot making paper. It ain't looking good for <laughs> It's true. Besides the Scorpion skin, it's funny and fascinating that there's the people's opponents. There's Then there's Sonic Fox, who whoever fights him last has the best chance. Right? And this is pretty much true. I saw this yesterday. Um, well, I'm not paying that much for a cutscene, and it is. You you literally activate a cutscene. That's it. You're not partaking in it. You're not doing anything. You're not getting... You know, What you're doing is you're not getting $12 or $15 and every single character in the game has their own unique Halloween fatality. then I could get behind it a little bit because then at first people are like what 12 bucks 15 bucks they're like no 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 Scorpion's Halloween fatality is completely different than Sub-Zero so Sub-Zero is completely different whatever and you're like oh okay so for 15 or 12 bucks we're actually getting 23 fatalities okay okay Like, like, I, 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 I sincerely, this is the, like, I sincerely, what, why did these people, can somebody explain to me, right, explain it to me like I'm your dad, explain it to me why these people are so upset that Warner Brothers don't fund the pro scene. Now, apparently in MK10, there was... The Ermac skin, which was cheap, and it went towards the pro scene, right? But think about it just for a second. 
just think about it for a second. This game had a fundamental coded problem. This is what none of these people are mentioning either. You ever notice that? The player one advantage was an actual coded issue in the game, and they were running real world tournaments with this broken gameplay. They all never should have gone ahead. They all should have been nullified. Anyone that won while that was running should give back the winnings, have their win removed because people were winning and losing on, a, on an actual fundamental coded issue. Right? But the thing is though, it's not the... F like, this is like, you know, this is exactly like, these people are stupid, man. Like, seriously. If, uh, if they came out and said that, I would have bought the fatality twice. Yeah, because just like when you donate to like, you know, helping starving kids in Africa, of course all the money is going to help the starving kids in Africa. It's probably some kid from two suburbs away that they said, hey, can, listen, uh, we'll give you a hundred bucks, take a photo, right? They slap it on a, on a, on one of these UNICEF things or whatever, and they send it to these old boomers that think they're really helping these people. You know, kid got money two suburbs away. These people are getting, you know, lifelong money from boomer clowns that have no idea they're being taken for a ride. And it's the principle of it. Because you think we're gonna get you you think we're gonna get receipts? You think we're gonna get receipts for where the money goes from this? Pro scene's hilarious, man. Right? The more the more and more I see about it, the more and more I hear about it, now I fully and a hundred percent understand what the hell has happened to Mortal Kombat. Right? NRS has been chasing this esports scene forever and you know at one point you know MK11 wasn't even part of EVO didn't it get banned at one point who cares about this franchise and the competitive scene and as I said in my previous video how the hell did these people even survive playing competitive scenes when they couldn't patch or nerf things before right I partook in an uh, Ultimate MK3 tournament when I was um, in my late teens, early 20s, in an arcade. It was only tiny, it was only like, I don't know, maybe 15 people. Right? There was no like money prize. Mm. I, I, I think you got like maybe like a free pass for a week or something at the arcade. You know. Maybe, maybe KFC for the win, you know. But this is this is what I mean. Like, who gives a shit about the pro scene? Do you really think that the average person that bought this anorexic felt like you know, anorexic game with nothing to do in it? Give a shit about your pro scene? Maybe you two percenters out there give a crap about the gameplay, but most people, that's not enough, especially when the gameplay is broken. Especially when there's nothing else to do in this game. I don't give a crap about this stuff. This is a joke. Good <laughs> pro tour. Jeez. You know. See, this is this is the problem. This is the problem, right? Is that these people, and this is why in general like esports is an issue, right? Because it turns essentially something that's supposed to be a fun entertainment hobby into a job, right? And then certain companies get enamored and go, oh, we need to adjust our game because otherwise these people can't win, you know? Or they're not going to stick around and they're really big on YouTube or they're really big on Twitter. And, you know, we're going to lose money if we don't support it or do this or do that or change our game for what they want, you know. This is why Mortal Kombat is a laughing stock right now. It used to just be the metal of, like, like, who cares, like, I, I, what was I saying the other day? 
in like um I think I was was it saying to MK Confessions, if I was like rich, I'd do my own Evo. Right? And I would have I would have tournaments for games that were so old. It'd be hilarious, right? Art of Fighting 1. World Heroes. Samurai Showdown 1. You know. Don't care about your nerves, just sit there and play it, bitch. <laughs> have some fun for Christ's sakes. This is a problem. This is one of the downsides of social media and all this sort of esports and everything like that. Is that, you know, people have lost the art of having fun. You know, everything has to be a job or these people will go, I want to be like Sonic Fox. You want to be like Sonic Fox, do you? You want to be like this. Au revoir.